Hello and good day, everybody. This is Kyla, and this is The State of Health. Today, we're going to dive into some cool and super important research. Picture this. You're a young medical professional, and a patient comes in who has experienced a cardiac arrest outside of the hospital. They're in a coma, and you're trying to figure out the best way to treat them. Imagine your patient's brain as a garden that needs just the right amount of water. The water in this case is the oxygen and blood the brain needs. If the garden doesn't get enough water, it starts to wither. This is kind of like a condition called hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. It's a big fancy word, but it basically means the brain isn't getting enough oxygen, which sadly can lead to death or severe disability. Now let's talk about the water faucet for this garden, or in our case, the level of carbon dioxide in the blood. This can be like a knob on a tap, controlling the flow of blood to the brain. The more carbon dioxide, the more blood flow. Sounds good, right? Well, guidelines usually suggest aiming for a normal level of carbon dioxide in the blood. But get this. Two studies showed that having a bit more carbon dioxide might actually lead to better outcomes for the patient. So, a group of researchers decided to put this to the test. They conducted a trial where half of the patients were targeted for a slight increase in carbon dioxide and half for a normal level. They then looked at how the patients were doing neurologically six months later. Now, these were no small numbers. They had an impressive 1,700 patients from 63 ICUs in 17 countries. About 43.5% in the group with a bit more CO2 had a favorable neurologic outcome compared to 44.6% in the group with normal CO2. As for deaths within six months, it was 48.2% in the group with a bit more CO2 and 45.9% in the group with normal carbon dioxide. So what's the bottom line in this whole carbon dioxide debate? After all the research and tests, it turns out that targeted mild hypercapnia, or aiming for a slightly higher level of carbon dioxide in the blood, did not improve neurologic outcomes at six months, the risk of death within six months, the distribution of scores for functional outcome, or health-related quality of life. You might be thinking, wait a minute, I thought more carbon dioxide meant more blood flow to the brain and that's a good thing, right? Well, it's not as simple as that. Although it's true that some studies involving humans and in animal models have suggested that a higher level of carbon dioxide can be neuroprotective due to increased cerebral blood flow, our findings here don't support this hypothesis. Okay, but what about the side effects? Did increasing carbon dioxide levels lead to more adverse events? The answer is no. Our findings were consistent with previous trials and the most common side effects like pneumonia, arrhythmias, sepsis, and bleeding did not differ significantly between the groups. One thing to note, though, this trial focused on patients with out-of-hospital cardiac arrest of a presumed cardiac or unknown cause. So, our results may not apply to other causes of cardiac arrest, like trauma or anaphylaxis, or to in-hospital or unwitnessed cardiac arrests. In the end, our understanding of the effect of carbon dioxide levels on cerebrovascular control is still incomplete. However, the results of this trial contribute to our growing knowledge in this area and will hopefully guide us towards more effective treatments in the future.